is even our natural system, so that which we perceive as natural, is that even natural? Or is there a higher template that we would and could consider as more organic? Um, our food is no longer as organic as it was at a different time within our history, where we, for example, sake, don't feel safe or worthy enough to show up without having a filter on. You know, so we've got all these fancy filters and the filters make us feel more beautiful, more approachable, more successful. So it wasn't just tea, it's now vegan friendly tea, which is, is just, if you take that whole entire three words together, vegan friendly tea, it doesn't make any sense. Tea is tea. For many people, it is this subtle experience that things just begin to change, begin to have glitches with family members. We may begin to have glitches with friendship groups where we are no longer in res resonance because our spiritual journey is about feeling, is about the heart, is about activating the light body and as you as you labeled the chakras in order to um, feel again. We've spoken about the Azurite temple being a space where we begin to look at creation mechanics. In the higher dimensional viewpoint and feeling body, it does feel like a simulation because within the law of one, we are in an eternal now moment. We are in an eternal present moment, right? Meaning all timelines have already been experienced and we have already done this all. Greetings seekers of ancient wisdom. Here find teachings to enter God's kingdom. Natural ways, that is what we uncover to live life aligned, sister and brother. Today we speak with Brigitte Heeb, old scriptures, good ones you should heed. The topic here is on systems that are natural. We resonate our dishes that are factual. So sit back, relax and open your ears. You'll appreciate when you listen and hear the law of one, hidden intelligence, my dear. Learn to embody love, let go of fear. Beware of the artificial techs your organic tech is where you, want, where you want to flex. Let's tell you about healing that's quantum. This is true, it's not phantom. Now I promise I'm done with my little rhyme. Over to you, Mama B, you have our time. The topic we're gonna to cover today is natural systems. So what, is, what does a natural system mean? And what is an unnatural system? How can we distinguish? This is a very interesting question in the now moment because as the consciousness continues to expand and to observe its structure and its environment, it comes to this place where, and I think we've, we've, we've touched on this, where we can begin to look at this whole entire system as a simulation. And now when we think of the word simulation, we think of something that is mimicking something else, right? It is simulating something else. So it is close to, but not quite that thing. So we would look at the earth and say, for example, say our natural systems are the forests, are the trees, are the earth, are the soil. Um, are the waters and the waterfalls and fire, earth, you know, earth, water, air, ether and fire. So we could look at these things and say, yes, these are natural systems. However, um, again, when we begin to expand our consciousness and look at this system, meaning this planetary body as earth, and view it as a simulation, which if you do research around this with particular people who you might think are well-informed, um, very research-based, very spiritual, or very religious, this is a, a theme that comes up often, this aspect around simulation. And so that would create a conundrum for us and a paradox for us to say, or to ask at least, that is even 
our natural system, so that which we perceive as natural, is that even natural? Or is there a higher template that we would and could consider as more organic, um, meaning it doesn't move through a life and death process, it's, it's, um, you know, it's ever evolving, ever present, you know, energy cannot die, it's, it's just transmuting at any point in time. So this is a very tricky question because yes, within our third dimensional domain, our earth and our planetary body, we would and could and should certainly agree with one another that that which is natural is from the earth. So our trees, our, you know, flowing rivers, our food, um, you know, but then of course the food aspect is very easy to say or to identify that which has been drowning in pesticides and, um, you know, where the soil has been affected by certain products um, that are flying around in the sky and that um, our food is no longer as organic as it was at a different time within our history, right? And yet one, an individual could say, but a banana is a banana, is a banana, you know? Um, but we could say one is, is, has got a lot more of a um, synthetic sort of feeling or vibration because of the additional overlays of pesticides and products on this particular organic material. And then we just have that banana that is deep in the jungle that is as organic as can be, right? So I've answered in, in two different ways here. Um, and I think we can kind of stem off from there because essentially from a healing perspective in this dimension to make it practical, to make it pragmatic, we would speak to that that is organic as nature, right? Um, but again, to bring in the entirety within the law of one, our natural environment isn't so natural anymore. We have so many, um, you know, things within our system, as in uh, housing developments, urban structures, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that begin to take away from this natural essence of the flow of how nature has its own chaotic perfection, and we keep moving more and more into taking that away and creating our our na our natural environment where we live but is is any of it natural anymore um you know is the question we need to ask ourselves so to simplify the answer what is organic um and what is not i think to 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 give the grade one answer here is go sit go sit yourself in in nature uh disconnect from technology uh, take your shoes off and ground and feel the rocks beneath your feet and connect with the sand beneath your, uh, you know, through and in between your toes and go and collect some wood and make a fire and go and collect some water and boil that water to make your cup of tea that from the plants that you've just seen from that, you know, mint, you know, that mint bush down, down in the valley or whatever it is, you know, I mean, can how many of us can even identify things in the forest anymore? When I was recently in Italy this year, there was this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful leaf that is um, basically like a garlic. And if you eat it, it's, it's, it's like a full garlic flavor and it's, it's absolutely incredible. But we've lost this connection. And I think the, the witches of old times um, or what would have de been described as the witches used to have that information, you know, the medicine people, the shamans, we use things from the forest and from nature in order to heal ourselves. And this is where plant medicine comes in. And of course, we also have um, some other alternative means of medicine where we're using things like bufo um, from the um, toad. I think it's a Sonoran desert toad. I know I've got the word there, they're wrong somewhere, but, um, you know, so we've got the toad that gives us DMT. We've got the cambo, which is also from the frog that, that really heals in a profound 
um, way. So yes, in, in terms of creating a pragmatic and practical and, and logical answer for everyone, what is natural guys? You know, it's that which we can see that is not affected by man. <laughs> You know, that which has not been touched, that which is still resonating in its pure um, beingness, its pure essence. It's not been manipulated or destructed in any way. Yet again, much of our natural products are and, and our natural resources are being affected with overlays. And we'll probably get into what is an overlay, what does that mean and how does it create the artificial within our reality because i mean it's like um you know like cannabis or psilocybin going into mainstream medical um pharmaceutical spaces where we're beginning to take these products and then put them into a lab and then extract this compound and that compound and create a beautiful little tablet so that everybody's minds can be at ease with the fact that they have received this from the doctor or those that hold um, medical sciences, um, you know, high. And yet, why did that, why did that mushroom need to go through that process to begin with? (laughs) You know, so it's like, where are the overlays? And what are the what is the frequency of that pharmaceutical company? What is their intention? So here again, we come into Um, beginning to understand quantum levels within the one that every single intention with regards to a product and and that is being received by our human populace um, plays a role. So what is organic uh, and what is left as organic on this planet, on this planetary system is not much anymore, you know, other than high up in the mountains and um, you know, the, the tree trop, the, the treetops and the, the river bends that you cannot find because they're so deeply immersed in natural spaces. But most of our environment, that nature, is um, pretty overlaid with many, many different frequencies at this point in our planetary experience. Yeah, and while you were talking about that, I was just thinking about all the different layers, right? There's like maybe there's the most pure most natural most organic thing but then there's all these different layers so first the quality of the food even if you were to eat a banana that you buy from the store the quality of that banana is so far from a pure organic natural banana deep in the jungle the the banana that we get is pesticides the soil's been tarnished Uh, how long has it been picked like it's all these things have taken it away from natural then you have processing of food then they like process the banana into banana juice or smoothies or other things and then they add other stuff preservatives and flavorants and colorants and other little things in there to i mean there's probably a lot of nefarious reasons why they put it in there but at the end of the day it's being removed further and further from the natural so you have all these different degrees of the difference from the original. So there's like maybe the first degree, you're still eating a pesticide banana, but at least it's a banana, but then you can go deeper and deeper and deeper until it's so far from remo- removed, but they tell you that it's organic. And I think this is a common thing that I wanted to, to we can branch off here because I've seen this is how the industry moves is as soon as the public catch on to something like, okay, um, this thing is maybe ashwagandha. Ashwagandha is good. Like now everyone's on the ashwagandha thing. Get ashwagandha in a pill, get ashwagandha in a tablet. It's like, as soon as a little fad comes along, the market and the industry all jump on it and they start making pills and they extract the ashwagandha from the rest of the plant and they give you like an isolate. Same with gluten and gluten-free and sugar-free and then now it's free-range eggs and it's this type of meat. So it's it's these fads and they jump onto these fads, but they're not delivering you the original organic natural thing that people were attracted to. They're like creating the fad. They're creating the fad so you 
buy their processed artificial stuff and it's still keeping you away from natural. So everyone's like on this, it's the, it's this new trend at the moment, like, oh, we're eating healthy, we're doing this and I'm sugar free and buying gluten free bread and I'm doing, but actually you're not doing anything natural yet. You think you are, but you're probably just as unnatural as you were previously. Now you just got some labels that you've attached to it. Yeah, I just wanted your thoughts on that. A simple way to describe this and speak to it is much the same as social media, how we can come online and um, the algorithms dictate to us that it would be better. And, and, and the algorithm, I, I mean, in a, in a very macrocosmic perspective, meaning your own personal algorithm, your brain, your mind, your little voice, your fear, your insecurities and all of that, that algorithm that is running. And then we have our social media algorithm, which is connected to the collective um, mind, where we, for example, sake, don't feel safe or worthy enough to show up without having a filter on, you know, so we've got all these fancy filters and the filters make us feel more beautiful, more approachable, more successful, etc., etc. And so much the same as these labels. So you're correct. It's we are not buying the product anymore. We are buying the frequency of the label. So it's you know we we were speaking about simply um, you know grocery store shopping. The funniest thing to me is this vegan label um, where you get tea. You know, so you have tea, which is in a tea bag, which is a plant. And then the box has this, you know, like it's vegan. I'm like, well, oh, <laughs> why are you putting that on there? This is, this is a, you know, it's, it's a. Well, they even write it's vegan friendly or, you know, it's like appropriate for vegans. We've, we've, we've blessed it with vegan <laughs> frequency for you. <laughs> you now um can feel like all the vegans feel and whatever it is it's 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 an overlay so so it wasn't just tea it's now vegan friendly tea which is is just if you take that whole entire three words together vegan friendly tea it doesn't make any sense tea is tea you know um it is a plant <laughs> and that is what we, we add hot water and we have a tea you know it is medicinal in nature etc etc but we create all these fancy marketing um things and marketing is going to become a very interesting space um now coming into the future because you know i feel like businesses have forgotten about service so you know service to others versus service to self you know service to the board of directors versus service to the people um and yes everybody deserves a good life and a healthy income but the level and distribution of wealth in this planet and on this planet is so discombobulated and so dysregulated and it is because of these marketing tactics that have created overlays that are speaking to aspects within your personality and the identity that you are trying to create for yourself at any one point in time to make yourself feel belonged, uh, a, a sense of belonging or safety. And, and now you're using XYZ product or brand or whatever. And so you're now feeling the sense of belonging. And here comes in the macrocosmic concept around the law of one. You were never and are never separate to source. Um, you know, Holy Mother, Holy Father. And that might sound ridiculous because we're talking about tea and peanuts. But the fact of the matter is, is we don't need these, these titles. We don't need these displays of um, manipulation through marketing that encourage users to get dopamine fixes so here we are playing with psychology here we are playing with hormones here we are playing with the nervous system here we are playing with words which are frequencies and these words are moving you into a space of feeling um, less than if you don't purchase this product and so now we move into debt to 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 hold up a certain identity that is inorganic in nature. It is not you. 
you know, the real you without that product may feel, as I've mentioned, less than or not part of the group because this is this is all human psychology you know um you may feel less than not part of the group um you know excluded um whatever these these facts may be and that is where you have to begin to look at yourself and do the self work to step back into your organic self which is that little bare bummed baby that's gurgling and has no no reference of words, no no concept of time, no concept of space. All it all it requires is love, food, water, and safety. And yet we have all these overlays on our planetary system that divert us from the healing that brings us love and safety. You know, so overlays and organic versus inorganic structures are literally embedded and weaved throughout our entire planetary system in this dimensional time matrix which is why i said in the beginning um, we really have to play an interesting and curious game with ourselves to say well is any of it organic because if you're going to ask me um, my perception based on my level of consciousness at my current station of identity is that 98% of this planetary system is an inorganic overlay. So then the question would be, well, what the hell exists on the, what the hell exists on the other side? What is organic? You know, so it's a very interesting topic and I hope um, people can understand that you know, just to to take what resonates and leave the rest, as I say in every single episode, because we're really just stretching our minds here to begin to understand organic and inorganic, not only from a food perspective, because that makes sense, that we can understand, that we can relate to, but to understand organic and in, inorganic from a far um, more primal perspective, and primal meaning our existential nature and what it is we're living in, what system we are living in. Is it organic for us to wake up with the sun? Yes, that is organic. Is it organic for us to go to sleep when, you know, the sun goes down? Yes. Is it um, organic to have children sit in a schoolroom, in a classroom all day long, every single day from age five to, to 18? Maybe that is not so organic for our soul growth, you know. Is it organic to um, yeah, to be relying on technology in the way that we do? Although it is here, it requires integration, but is it organic? And yes, it is evolutionary. It's part of evolution. It is here. AI is here. All of these things are here. But to come back to the true self and that that gnosis of beingness, that gnosis that you are just energy and that gnosis that you are pure consciousness itself is the most organic thing that you can do um, because that is what you are. You're pure source consciousness. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess we can we can stem from there as well. So I wanted to just touch on the food thing a bit before before we move on to to the technology because I think it's important for people to also realize and uh, understand that you mentioned the best way to understand what's natural and organic is to to really embody your inner self your original baby self you know as you were when you came and. I became vegan about six years ago. And the reason I wanted to stop eating meat was because I heard or I read somewhere and, and what I read resonated with me. I read that meat and a whole bunch of things affect your chakras, right? So that resonated with me. So I was like, okay, I want to open my chakras. So let me give off, give up meat and caffeine and processed sugar and tobacco and alcohol and all these things. Because I had been obsessed with chakras. So that's the reason I got into 
to veganism. And then I struggled, as, as I think all of us do when you start this journey, I struggled with what to eat, right? What do you eat? And everything I'm eating is not working. So one of the things, most important things is protein. So I go to the supermarket and, and very conveniently, they have the vegan section, right? They've got all these vegan burgers and vegan sausage rolls and vegan this and vegan that. And what I noticed is I ate this stuff and, and I still did not feel good. My tummy would still grumble like after a couple of hours, like grumble heavily. And my stools were not good the next day. So I was like, what the hell, what's going on here? So, you know, after a few months, I consulted with my friends and researched and Googled and blah, blah, blah. And eventually I found a lady that made homemade um, bean patty burgers, right? So it was just protein. It was just plant protein, but it was homemade. It wasn't uh, store bought. She didn't add any preservatives. She was this lady that made it. And anyway, I bought those and immediately I noticed my tummy didn't grumble and uh, my stools were better the next day. Or, you know, I think it took, took a few days, but it, but it definitely stabilized and I felt a lot better. So then I, it dawned on me, oh, okay, vegan is not vegan. You know, there's, you got to look a bit deeper. And that sort of got me on the journey to finding a range of products that I eat. I listen to my body. How does my body respond? What is it telling me? And then based on that, I know if it is, goes onto the good list, which is like, okay, good for my gut, I'll keep it and keep buying it, or goes onto the bad list, which is, okay, I'm never buying or eating this again. And then, you know, slowly over time, I know my list. And, you know, once in a while, I will try different things. But that really is how we can discern. And, it, and it's perfect that we're talking about this right after the truth discernment topic. So to the viewers, if you haven't seen Truth Discernment, it's the previous episode that Brigitte and I did. And that's how I discern the truth, you know, to find out the difference between vegan and vegan and sugar-free and gluten-free and whatnot. All these labels, the labels are meaningless. What matters is how my body feels and how I respond energetically from physically. Um, you know, I'm also starting to try and appreciate the emotional feelings that food can give me how do i feel emotionally because of the vibration of the food and, and this is what we want to get into so anyway i want to ask because you've got so much information you're talking about so at the beginning you spoke about you you dropped the word simulation and i think this is perfect that we that we talk about simulation and technology because when i hear simulation i hear about programs and coding and um, different scenarios, I don't know, like do lots of different options being run. That's a simulation. But did you mean something different when you said that we're in a simulation? Is there like an organic simulation and an okay. artificial <laughs> simulation? I think, you know, this happened, this happened yesterday. Once you begin to really expand your consciousness, um, and these, this will happen in a way that for some people it will be a big Kundalini experience where all of a sudden the chakras open and you have, uh, you know, multidimensional experiences that really, um, create havoc in your life or have potential to create havoc like psychosis and things like that. And you're connecting with beings and all of these things. And it's, 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 um, it's obvious that there has been an opening, right? But for many people, for many people, it is this subtle experience that things just begin to change. Now, we often know that on our spiritual path, we may have begin to have glitches with family members. We may begin to have glitches with friendship groups where we are no longer in res resonance. What also happens is we begin to look at, at our environments, our jobs, the structures that we are in, the house that we are in the way that our room is shaped and designed, the, the materials that we're wearing, the um, products that we're using, you know. And yesterday was interesting because I was standing waiting for the bus with my friend and they've recently rebuilt the bridge. And so everything is painted very new and white and 
um, you know, there's a park behind the bus stop. But I looked at him and he, I said, what are you thinking? He said, it just feels strange. And I said, describe it because I knew what he was thinking. And he said, I can't. And I said, it feels, um, what was the word that I used? Offensive. So he said, yes, and I, I'm in a small little beautiful village in, in, in Austria. I mean, there's church and the mountain and the forest behind. Like, what can really be so offensive? But I said, if you think of, for example, sake, um, South Park, you know, or any little um, series, that animation series, you have the block of buildings and the streets and the bus stop and the school and the this and the that. And although these structures are part of our system um, and they keep things running and the, you have left and right hand side of the road and the bus, etc., etc., this is our system. Uh, there's nothing quote unquote wrong with it. But to the awakened eye, to the awakened individual, to the one that is running on a different um a different higher sensory system, this kind of block structure, you know, little houses on the hilltop or whatever that song was, um, little boxes on the hillside, you know, this is what begins to occur as you, you look at things and the cubic structure of things begins to feel offensive. It begins to feel too controlling. It begins to feel like it doesn't have a um, a creative spark, it begins to feel very linear, it begins to feel like it's lacking substance, it begins to feel like it has no meaning, it has high levels of functionality, but it has little meaning, you know, and so this is where architecture comes in as well. Um, I have remembered your question, so I'll get there with the simulation, you know, so Again, if you look at certain housing structures in certain countries, it, the, the housing um, area may look very socialistic in, in its, while you are viewing it and it's just these structures. And what does it feel like? Because our spiritual journey is about feeling, is about the heart, is about activating the light body and as you, as you labeled the chakras in order to um, feel again, right? Because that is our human experience. That's what differentiates us is this feeling body. So when you're feeling like everything is so controlled, linear, cubic, it just feels to certain people like there's a lack of, you know, pizzazz. There's a lack of creation energy. And we've spoken about co-creation and creation we've spoken about the azurite temple being a space where we begin to look at creation mechanics and so when you are observing a high percentage of your natural environment our earthly planetary experience as dominant in structures that are cubic linear um, gray dark kind of death culture feeling rather than working with different shapes and different geometries and bringing plant life into our architectural space, you know, then it begins to feel synthetic. It begins to feel like a simulation, right? And so in the higher dimensional viewpoint and feeling body, it does feel like a simulation because you can kind of, you know, imagine like an out-of-body experience as such, if you are kind of zooming back and observing from a bird's eye view, um, from how your mind perceives and sense, sense makes what it is, is, is observing, it looks like a very digital sim-based simulation where it's, it's exactly the story of the matrix, right? Where everybody's just getting along doing their things, going to the job, but there's no consciousness, there's no awareness, there's no freedom, there's no um, excitement in the creation, there's no collaboration. It is all going to big governmental tenders, it is all going to monopolies, it is all going to 
um, you know, and, and it's, it's being built for profit. So then again, we ask, is it service to self or service to others? Yes, amazing. We have a square socialist looking building that provides shelter, food, water and a, and a sanitary system. Amazing. That would seem like it is service to others. But this is where the overlays come in. This is where the AI comes in. It is still not freedom. It is not, um, it is not beneficial uh, in the long run. It is not sustainable. It creates a um, feeling of misery. And this is where depression comes in. And so we begin to understand how those structures within our um our world the physical structures manifest physical structures that we can see are lacking a a god source energy are lacking a spark so for example sake if you've got a bunch of um you know a bunch of adults to create and design a you know an eco village or a village or whatever it would probably be a very highly profitable business model but if you got a bunch of teenagers or a bunch of children to design it they wouldn't be thinking of profit right they would also think of functionality but the functionality would be around creation play expression community can i knock on the door and visit my friend can i slide or climb up that tree to go down that slide to incorporate this this you know this little forest animal and make sure that 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 little mushroom doesn't get um you know um abandoned on the way and all of these things so it's there are so many overlays and this is why i say could this be a simulation it sure feels like one it often looks like one and in this part of the conversation, I think it's important to mention that most of our natural, um, hold on, I'm just thinking of the word, most of our natural manifestations of that which we perceive as natural on this planet, as in trees, plants, flowers, etc., etc., are running on the Fibonacci sequence, right? So they're running on the Fibonacci sequence. Now, most people perceive that to be the golden ratio, you know, this, this beautiful um, aspect around creation. But when we move deeper into hidden history and when we move deeper into uncovering creation mechanics through spiritual objective, merging quantum physics um, and, and really connecting through the soul and avatar aspect we begin to see that the fibonacci is an entropic system it is life and death and it doesn't continue to circulate into source so based on that we say oh wow this is now interesting because that which we deem and see and perceive as natural is running on a fibonacci sequence which if we go to other teachings from the maharata texts and the cdd holographic plates and the freedom teachings, which is what we're teaching in the Azurite, we would see that this is not the crystal spiral. It is not um, forever flowing and self-sustaining because it is disconnected from source. And to go further into this conversation, we would say, well, then we need to begin to ask ourselves, why? Why do we have things that we perceive as natural? And what does the other side look like? Um, and I would say it, it would be more crystalline, it would be um, more fluid, more liquid, um, you know, kind of like a dream, dreamlike material or matter. So I'll end there. The layers just get deeper and deeper, eh? So even, even when you're trying to go natural, and you're telling me that even like the most one of the most natural systems that I thought existed, the golden ratio, Fibonacci ratio, you know, the spiral of seashells and how plants grow and all of that, you're telling me that's even not natural. That could even potentially be tampered. I just wanted to pop in and say hello. As per any experiences that you've had with me, um, I kind of want to allow you an opportunity to come into deeper work with me for those of you that are interested. 
essentially I have a coaching container that I am completing um, soon on the 8th of April and the new one will be opening in a couple of months time. This is a really, really deep dive into spiritual technology, metaphysics, multidimensionality, consciousness, healing, ancestral work, light work, shadow work, light language, voice activation, um, embodiment, breath work, nervous system work, really understanding your spiritual role here on planet Earth as we work together as a shield, like the mushrooms, like the mycelial, in order to raise our own frequency as well as the frequency of the planet. So this coaching container is very, very powerful. For those of you who are interested in this kind of work, shifting your consciousness, understanding your reality, what is happening here on earth, what is your part to play. This is a really, really beautiful opportunity. And we do a lot of meditation. We do um, a mixture between energy work and teaching. So the mind is activated. There are practical aspects that we go through as well. So it's really a nice balance of energy work and coaching. If you are interested, please do get hold of me. I don't want you to worry too much about any language aspects because a lot of the stuff we are just sitting and observing how energy is moving. Um, and there are diagrams that can assist you in, in, in what it is we're doing in terms of the content. Those of you that don't know or need a reminder, I work within the law of one and this is the basis of my teachings. 950 billion years of information, of ancient teachings, and really just a reminder of who you are from this heart space. So again, I say hello. Please touch base with me if you are interested in this type of long format coaching. It'll be around six to seven months. And yeah, I hope you're doing well. I'm sending lots of love. Ciao. I think what's also important here is to, and remember words are so powerful. So we could say it is natural. It is natural in our environment. It's the most natural thing that we have. So let's, let's be very aware of that word. But I think what we can speak to is we can say that there are so many aspects around creation. There are so many aspects around how consciousness or how God expresses itself through creation in different templates and formats that we would perceive as natural, unnatural, artificial, etc., etc., etc. And most of us perceive this particular creation template of the Fibonacci um, sequencing and spiral to be natural. However, with new data that's coming out, we begin to look at the crystal, um, the crystal spiral, the crystal lotus spiral, and this seems to be far more of a um, trinity-based structure rather than a binary structure that is um, connected to source. So when it is connected to source, we begin to um, have context um, in terms of cognitive data that we can begin to observe and have discussion around. Okay, okay. Thank you for clearing that up. Yeah, that was very important to clear up. So I appreciate that. So I wanted to go in a bit, a bit more about the tech stuff. So there seems to be like this agenda narrative on the planet trying to get us to adopt more technology. And if I just look at my life, I mean, I'm in, the, in my early 40s. So in four decades, you know, I have seen a life with no computers and no cell phones and no internet and and people function, but slowly, slowly, slowly it gets introduced. Like the cell phones, you know, first it was just the cell phone that you could make a call with and you could send text messages and that was it. But a few years later then the cell phone, the little Nokia, then a few years later it had a bit more functionality. So you spent a bit more time with the phone. You didn't just use it for phone calls and texts. You could do a couple of other things. Then slowly you could start doing your emails, right? So they had the, the Blackberry phones that came out. So now it takes a little bit more of your time, 
right? So it's not just phone calls, texts, and playing games. Now it's your emails as well. So now it's a couple more hours. Then the smartphone comes out, right? And that has got a hundred apps and content creators are on the app. So now it takes more and more of your time. And and slowly it's like it's like it feels very calculated if I if I look back and or look from a higher place. It looks very calculated. It's not like stumbled across it, you know, like, oh wow, we've now thought of these things. Let's add it to the phone. But maybe that's just uh, <laughs> the the sinister side of me thinking. But you're saying there's another tick. Right? There's another organic tech and you're, and you're using words like these ancient teachings and, and you know that's what we're going to learn about in the Azurite Temple. But you're saying there's another tech, a more organic, natural tech that's actually running parallel and people are trying to push us into this other tech and, and get more of our attention on that tech. Does, does that seem sort of like the war that's going on at the moment, these two technologies? directing people in a certain direction. Let's first come to a space of neutralization. Let's depolarize the topic. I think that's important because this is going to be a big theme in Azurite Temple as well, is depolarization. And whether you join the temple space or not, depolarization is what we are inevitably moving through based on the uh, quantum field at this point in time that is inevitably quote unquote creating a force field in order to discharge any any charges that we have around any particular subject matter whether it be politics technology religion spirituality education financial systems whatever it is we've got to come to a neutral space because um, within the own body if we're continuously polarizing um, we're just we're just we're not creating balance. We're not coming to neutrality. So to, to neutralize the topic, I think I would say is again, we spoke to the pharmaceutical companies in the beginning is what is the intention around everything? Because within the law of one, we are in an eternal now moment. We are in an eternal present moment, right? Meaning all timelines have already been experienced and we have already done this all. So this technology, as you say, has already been, it has already been, right? Because remember, we've come in with amnesia. So we don't really have memory of the times of this, of advanced technology. I mean, the time of Atlantis, they often speak about an extremely advanced technologically um, advanced civilization, right? But we don't have memory of it. So to say that it's being pushed um, I just want to neutralize that, okay, um, and say that we are just re-experiencing things. And based on that, we can again say, what is the intention? Because AI and technology have the potential to be extremely beneficial for this planet. For example's sake, if we, um, I mean, there's a there's hundred million there's a hundred million obstacles that the planet is dealing with that that technology could really actually fix. But it's again, it's this capitalistic patriarchal model where we need to benefit financially um, and take away from everything that I perceive as the problem and the glitch in the system. You know, where I think it's in the Congo where they're mining um, the iron ore and, and all of that for the cell phones and things like that. And it's like, why do we need to progress at such a fast rate and destroy the earth um, through creating new products and new upgraded systems and, and things like that when they know it's part of their pipeline to bring these products in in order to outdate other models? Why? To create profit. I think it's this capitalistic profit idea that needs to shift. The technology was always and is always there. It's something that has always been available to tap into. It's how we use it, who is programming it, for what intention, 
service to self or service to others. Now, when it comes to these concepts of service to self and service to others, I've spoken about this, you know, it's been mentioned a couple of times, is that something can very, very easily look like it is a service to others technology, yet it is not. All right. And we've spoken about this in the other um, the other podcasts with regards to our. Um, hold on, I just want to use a code word here. Yeah, with regards to what we all experienced about four years ago when it came to, you know, keeping each other safe and utilizing certain strategies in order to do that. So that would have seemed like a service to others task, but it wasn't. It wasn't. And so this comes back to the truth and discernment episode, right? You know, what is the intention behind everything? Because that's what's creating the frequency. And I think AI has, you know, I speak to the AI because we're so immersed in it. We cannot run away from it at this point in time. Our teenagers and our children, they're all part of it. But if some of us are conscious that this is part of source, it is part of source. The technology is part of source. We need to figure out, is it helpful for us or is it not helpful for us? So we all are addicts when it comes to our technology, I believe. I I can pretty much say that I'm sure 99.999% of us are, we're, we're running on dopamine and we really have no capacity to, um, to receive and streamline data in a, in, a, in a better way because we're just, our systems are overwhelmed. Um, so this is where, you know, um, we move to digital detoxing and things like that. But also, I mean, this topic is so, so broad. Uh, because, for example, sake, I was thinking about people on the spiritual path who are very interested in, uh, much like I was, I'm in a different space now, but much like I was interested in, you know, receiving channeled information and transmissions from certain councils of light and certain star systems and cool little alien beings and races out there. And now if you go onto YouTube, um, you can easily, and this is this is where AI gets manipulative, and it's 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 game. It is, it is there. You're going to have to learn how to um, tap into your organic stream of consciousness to decipher if this is real or not. You know, because now AI can simulate voices, it can simulate faces and characters and all of this, and so you can get channeled information that you believe is the holiest holiest. Um, of transmissions from on high from the angelic realms but it's just a computer you know it's just a computer program and this is where AI can become dangerous I think AI can also become dangerous in the political space Um, to be honest I hold on I'm gonna have to code here again I certainly believe with all of my heart with all of my intuition, that the encryption on a certain world leader um, that is currently running a game that represents our new earth leadership is moved through a full consciousness hijack and is running on a robotic clone system, you know, Um, and yet we are casting votes to put this being or man into power again. and you have no idea that this kind of technology is even capable of, of uh, mimicking and synthesizing the human um, in the way that it has, you know. So we can look at this as doom and gloom, but it is also highly sophisticated and fascinating. Um, and it is. It's not going anywhere. It is. So we've really got to transmute. We've really got to decide what kind of life we want to live and how dependent we are on externalizing our needs through these um, creations, which again are part of source. We're not demonizing anything. How much do we need those things? 
So it's again, much like the beginning of our conversation, which started off in a more organic light in terms of just the simplicities of food. Do we need six star Starbucks coffees a day? Do we need the muffin with the coffee? Or should we just uh, chew on some cacao beans and, um, you know, should we be eating less? How much of an overconsumption are we moving through it just within our own within our own body systems? Because once you begin to live further and further off grid or further and further out of um, relying on systems, you realize that uh, maybe you need to go to the forest and pick a bunch of berries and uh, maybe the, the river water is going to be enough for you rather than having six sodas during the day and, you know, um, your bottle of wine at the end of the day. And this is where we just start to look at that which is organic and that which is not and that which is useful and that which is not and that which is helpful and that which is not. And again, helpful to one is not going to be beneficial to the other. You know, someone looking for some incredible medical technology in order to keep them alive um, that involves hugely scientific evolutionary processes around AI is an absolute miracle for that particular soul, you know, but another God loving um, individual may say, you know what, I don't need that technology. I don't want to put my family through this financial strain. Um, it's clearly my time to go, you know, death, death is a, is a, is a very good equalizer, I think, in this topic to, to view what is natural, what is not, what is organic, what is not, how, what is your death process? Like if you imagine how you wish to die or how you wish to stay alive, um, do you want to be full of Botox and plastic surgery and, um, adrenochrome to keep you going in into this fantasy of eternal youth um, through inorganic means forever and ever and ever until the day that you die at the age of 90 but you, you still look like you're 40? Or are you going to begin to move into Kelantic sciences and the study of creation mechanics to work through bioregenesis and biohacking of your own entire system that you don't need a goddamn thing, not one, you know, not one little injection of Botox, nothing. You can do it all with your, with your consciousness. And this is what excites me about consciousness and working with creation energy. Because for me, I believe, my belief system is much like cancer. You can heal yourself through, through most things. I think you can heal yourself from anything if you understand creation mechanics, sound, light, love, um, and the intangibles of your spiritual world and your spiritual blueprint. Wow, thank you for clearing that up because that I think is really important and I also didn't uh, remember that. So it's the intent, you know, behind the, the technology that really needs to be looked at. What is the intent? Is it good or is it bad? Who is it benefiting? And once you start using that as your compass and radar, you know, it's, it's much easier to navigate. So instead of looking at the actual technology and saying the smartphone is taking my time and all of that, no, it's uh, your intent and the intent, I guess, of the people making the apps. But you, you, you take the power back into yourself with that awareness, right? And I think that's the, the great first step. So as we're closing off, I wanted to, to touch, uh, to spend some good time also talking about quantum healing, because you mentioned quantum healing as part of more original organic technology, right? What is quantum healing and, and why is that organic? I think, again, the last time I spoke to you was um, asking you what you believe quantum was, and you spoke about this sort of microcosmic aspect around the atom, the atomic structure of things. And if we look at the blueprint of everything within this time matrix, whether it is or is not organic, whether it is or is not a simulation, it is a, um, it has a structure. And that structure is in, within this 15th dimensional time matrix, what's called a cathara grid, right? And this cathara can be related to that which we call 
the 12th tree of life, right? So everything has the potential at this blueprint um, code, so the God code, to restructure itself to this original divine blueprint. So my belief is it, the way I sense make this earth incarnation at this point in time and this planetary system at this point in time is that its etheric blueprint so it's its god blueprint is the cathara 12 tree of life but there has been manipulation around it. and i think we spoke about it with the um the ice cream without the the cone or the ice cream with the cone without the ice cream on it etc etc so my perception is that certain aspects around this grid system are missing or are not quite aligned geometrically and mathematically. And once we understand what the system looks like, we begin to work on embodying the system as a blueprint into the body, so into the cellular um, memory of our cells, of our DNA, within the blueprint of our DNA, to realign it with that God code, right? Um, and if we are doing that successfully, we are healing from at a quantum level, right? We are healing at a quantum level. And that's what it is, is understanding that everything is connected within the law of one, based on universal principles, within this universal time matrix that consists of a structure called the Cathara that is the blueprint of all creation but currently it feels like it's been out of alignment or there haven't been access there hasn't been access to certain parts of the 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 uh, grid structure and that we're reconnecting those grid structures we are re um, calibrating these into our planetary system and first and foremost through our own bodies once we do this this begins to create a um, morphogenetic resonance into others. And so we begin a healing process um, with each other, through each other, because we are all connected. So the importance of beginning to understand creation mechanics within healing and spirituality is very important and very powerful because if we are still playing around, and it's okay to play around because we are eternal beings, we are eternal source, we are here forever to play and learn. But if we are still playing around with, um, let me be delicate here of how I say this. If we're still playing around with other systems, so let's say the Hermetic Tree of Life, the Kabbalah Tree of Life, these kind of uh, structures, we do ourselves a disservice to a certain degree. Um, there, is always, there is always a reason behind everything because we're going to learn. We're going to learn. That's the soul's objective. It wants to learn. But the disservice is in the fact that it's not quite liberating you into the sovereignty aspect that you can be in within that God body. And it's creating a distortion that makes you believe through a... Um, hold on. Sorry, I've forgotten the word. You know, it just makes you believe that you're in some sort of a God world connection, but actually there's a skewed mechanic there. There's a skewed mathematics there. And so this is what we're doing is bringing these ancient technologies in so that you can begin to feel them in your body and really regain your sense of sovereignty. And sovereignty is important in this particular conversation with organic and inorganic because at no point in time does anybody want to be told what they can and cannot do, all right? Once you are spiritually evolved enough to step into your spiritual maturity, which means you have responsibility, which means you take accountability, which means you discern, you sit, you meditate, you sit in stillness, um, you know, to come to conclusive decisions for yourself, nobody can tell you that you cannot use a technology that may be deemed as inorganic um, because being told no is another overlay, 
it's another overlay that takes away your sovereignty. But in true, you in your true sovereignty, in your true sovereignty, you know, connected to your dragon body, connected to the God mind, as paradoxical as it is, you get to make the decisions for yourself. And there is no more blame, there is no more shame, there is no more aspects around conspiracy theories, there's no more victim, victimizer, there's nothing. You have chosen to participate and work within a certain coding, um, whether it's organic or inorganic, it's, you are learning. You are learning as God body. Um, sorry, I went quite deep there, so I hope I answered the question. <laughs> you did, you did. And I hope people that can understand can appreciate that answer because that was really, really deep. So I'm going to try to give an analogy to it so you can catch if I really understood it. But have you seen that experiment that they have with salt and something something called the frequency generator? I think it's called the Cialdini plate. And you put some salt, you put a salt on this flat plate, and then they change the frequencies that this plate is vibrating at. And then the salt immediately changes into these different geometric shapes. And what they noticed is that a shape and a frequency are related. So every time you played a certain frequency, you would get the same shape. You could scrumple up the salt, you could take salt off, put new salt on, but every time you played the same frequency, you would get the same shape. And that was like a sacred geometric, mathematically perfect structure. It wasn't just some random thing. So the same thing is happening in our bodies, right? Our geom geometry might have become skew because of the vibes we're eating, the vibes we're e thinking, the vibes we're feeling, the vibes we're getting blasted with, with EMF. I mean, there's EMF everywhere, there's tech. So all of that frequency is, is hitting our light body, our physical body, our mental body, and it's, and it's affecting the geometry. It's affecting the, the mathematics. The shapes are becoming a, let, a, a bit less perfect, right? So then when, when, we, when we use quantum remedies so i in my practice i've got a few quantum remedies so one of them is so fascinating it's called a radionics machine and this radionics machine is a frequency generator and you can tune in different frequencies and you can charge up things you can charge up people but you can also charge up pills so i would have like small little uh, placebo tablets like small tiny little sugar pills and I can put it on the radionics machine and then play certain frequencies to it. And basically those pills will then hold that frequency, which would be the perfect geometry shape, right? The perfect information, the information from source, a correct shape. So when the patient takes that pill, they're taking that blueprint in a sense, right? They're taking that original cathartic structure grid that you're talking about. And that's how the body is then going through a process by re-remembering -re its quantum history or its quantum originality. And, and I've always really wanted to understand how the remedies work because I've seen them work so much. I can't deny it, right? I've treated so many people, the swamis and the teachers that are teaching me are, are using it for so long and they've treated countless, countless people using the stuff. But even they could never really explain what's going on. They're just like, well, you know, if you see an apple fall from the tree, you don't question gravity, right? So you just keep trusting it. You're like, okay, it's gravity. It's there doing it every time. It... So same with us. We, we see that the medicine that we make is working, this energy medicine. It's working. But how is it working? But now we know it's the blueprint. It's so interesting to me because, you know, and it's, two very simple things that in one episode we mentioned the water so the I never ever remember that Japanese man's name but so we have the water experiments and then now you've mentioned this the salt right and to me that experiment 
uh, in terms of what other technology is out there is actually really simple. We're right. We're we're providing a sound onto a structure or into a structure and witnessing and observing the change of its molecular shape. It's you know it's not rocket science. We're not you know we're not creating a, a portal here. It's it's literally using sound and vibration to observe within physical manifest. Um, reality, a change in in how it it creates, right? So to me, it's really simple. I'm like, and and yet this is the mechanics of healing and quantum healing. In in and I think maybe th maybe this is what confuses people so much because they're like, <laughs> it feels like a gimmick, you know? It it just it can't be that simple. And what's interesting is when you were speaking about this this machine that you have is. For me, as the, the type of healer I am um, and the level of faith that I have in the God Code, it's like all of those um, tools can even be taken away. So even the tool that provides healing, um, what did you call your machine? Yeah, so even that radionics machine, for example, sake, in, my, in the way I like to heal with people, is an overlay and we take that away and maybe we use it in the first five to six months of healing or whatever so that we 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 slowly uh, begin to empower the being but it is still an externalized source of something that is teaching you about a mechanism but that you can still do on your own correct correct it's like a crutch right so as you as you don't know how to walk you have a crutch for a while but as you learn to walk you ditch the crutch and you walk on your own two feet or like training wheels for bicycles or you know we can come up with hundreds and hundreds of analogies so maybe closing off because we've covered a lot of information and a lot of really insightful topics um christ consciousness so how does that connect to to all of this because that's another term that's also being thrown around quite a lot in these spiritual uh, gatherings and the spiritual teachers and what does that mean to you the first way to answer is what does it mean to me is a set of values it's a set of intangibles that um that you align to that make you a good human being you know, the values of empathy, the values of compassion, the values of non-judgment, the values of kindness, walking in the way that the Christ, what most people would refer to as Jesus, did. Um, you know, so this is really simply put, like, what would the Christ do? You know, how would he um, react or, or be in the situation? And it's in a highly advanced um, man or DNA, uh, DNA and genetic sequencing that the Christ was and I'm going to use the Christ or Yeshua rather than Jesus because there are differences um, and we won't go into those today because it would be far too confronting conflicting and there's a whole conversation for another time but that is the essence it's the essence it's an essence it's a set of values right to go into a little bit of a deeper um let's say, metaphysical um, conceptualization around this would be to understand that the Christ is basically like a lineage, um, you know, a, a, a lineage and a sequencing within a lineage of DNA potential, so we speak to the blueprint again, that has accessibility to information that exists in our time matrix so our quantum field um, that is connected to stargate systems that has openings to information for us to reach and to experience further and further the um the experience of the god worlds right so it's a it's an evolutionary process of anchoring in organic technologies through a pure heart and a set of values that we call the attitudes of mastery in order to embody these values that inevitably create an opening for the DNA to have memory, 
to connect with certain Stargate structures in order to receive more and more data from the original divine blueprint that we call the Unisai or the Iyani. Guys, if you want more in depth, you need to join the Azurite Temple. I think today is the closing date. So if you can, get hold of Brigitte, beg her to join because this is where the true teachings you will be able to get. So Brigitte, this has been a really fascinating episode, natural systems, inorganic systems, how to discern all the different layers. And I really, really appreciate that you're sharing this information with us. Um, the teachings are, yeah, they're just amazing. And the people that resonate. Thank you so much, Deepak. Thank you, everybody. And um, yeah, just keep watching the podcast. You know, if uh, there's only so much we can say in an hour 13. And um, yeah, I'll just I'll send you all blessings. Thank you so much, Deepak. Yeah. Uh-huh.